from the gateway to bourbon country and live from Bellarmine University, welcome to season two of the Firkin Podcast. I'm Brian. I'm Chris. How are you doing, Brian? Man, I'm great. How about you? I'm fantastic. How's everybody out here tonight? There yeah, you go. We're All right, so it. we're on campus today <laughs> for the Sip and Swish 2024. We're celebrating bourbon and basketball at this great event, which is not just uh, for the game, but it's a fusion of sports, artistic expression, as well as community engagement. And one of my favorite things, whiskey. Whiskey. There whiskey you is go. the key you're here, right? That's right. And we're celebrating our awaited return for season two. This is season two, episode one, and I'll tell you what. We got a lot of fun set up for this season, don't we? We do have a lot of fun set up for this season. But take a look around, Chris. You see all these awesome distilleries in this room right yes, here? Yes, so we got like Hemingway Let's Whiskey back here. Let's get some shout outs. Nulu Whiskey back here. Castle and Key, Copper and Kings. Who else do we have? Chicken Cock. Uh, we have Blue Prince and Steelhouse Distillery. There you go. As well as I know that we have Goodwood over here as well. I, I saw you hiding over there. We were we going to go over and taste uh, on some of your stuff here in a second. We got a Basil Hayden. We got some Makers over there. This yes. is good stuff, man. I think Makers is doing some cool spring, uh, some screen printing action. So please make sure you go back and stop and talk to those guys right there. That's right. We got a great crowd. We got great pours for sure. And I'm stoked to be back at it. Tell you what, we got an awesome lineup today, including a couple of returning guests from our season one, episode six, who helped put this event together today. But uh, Chris, tell me who we got for the show. Representing Western Kentucky Distillery, we have master distiller Jacob Call. Oh, man. And the hype man himself from Bellarmine's basketball national champion, Forrest Smallwood. He's hype over man. there kind of hanging out boy? over there. All right. We're also going to have a sensational artist out of Owensboro, Aaron Kaiser. And we have more music coming up from the amazing Scarlet Call, who we got to hear earlier. We're also going to talk to her a little bit later, That's too, right. about some of her music. But to lead things off, we have a really, really special guy, and I don't think this guy needs any introduction. Does he, Brian? No, I don't think he does in this room. We have Bellarmine head coach and national champion himself, Mr. Scotty Davenport. We're going to have right, you come up on stage. Let's give Scotty a big hand. Let's give come Scotty on up here, a big Scotty. old round of applause. All right. We're all here for him tonight. Come on. Scotty, how are you? Scotty, what's happening? I just want to be four small wood when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? That's Don't what exactly all. what we said on our way over here. <laughs> we all want to be four small wood. I'll tell you what, let's, let's go ahead and open it up by talking about the excitement around being back on campus today. We're, we're usually at Freedom Hall. We're on campus today. How does that make you feel, Scotty? First and foremost, the students. Secondly, the, the support that everybody has joined in. What Forrest has done. Norton Healthcare with the white out. There's a white shirt on every seat. There's a gift bag, courtesy of Prime, the sport drink. There you go. Bellman grad, Max Clemens. So there's a shirt and a gift pack on every seat. The students are being fed at 615, and it's a seven o'clock tip. There's 50, 50 seats in Knights Hall without a gift bag or without a shirt. Okay. 50. 50. Hey, Only 50? It's a good ratio. Yes. Eastern gets 50 tickets per conference <laughs> rule. <laughs> I was wondering. I was like, was the budget Eastern. short? Sorry, They didn't get 51. Yeah, we're not giving you anything today. <laughs> it's amazing because it should be about everybody and an event like this that, that, Forrest, that Forrest has worked so hard. And then the, these, these distillers, one of which is my son. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah right. chicken cock bourbon. Russ oh, Davenport. yeah, I know Russ back there. I see there him you go. He He's probably trying to not want to be called but out. But if you think <laughs> about it, it should be about people. That's it right. It should be about people. That's right. And what these players have persevered, they will appreciate you tonight. From a family standpoint, there's been tragedies. There's been injuries, there's been illnesses, and they're persevering. We will dress nine players tonight. Nine Eli Roberts players. is down with a bad back, but we will fight 40 minutes. Absolutely. Wow. I bet it's glad to be it's good to be home, isn't it? Well, I'm a, it, we won 79 straight here at one point. That's right. 79 straight games. Yeah, it's games. good to be here. I think that deserves a round of applause, right? Yeah. 79 straight that's games. That's a fantastic number. There we number go. Right that's there. a good that's a good Good little record. Love that. I, I will share this. 
My message to the team tonight will be very brief. What I will tell them, the rest of their life, don't ever, ever utter the words, that's not my job. That's right. Don't ever say that, and tonight, go out and play like every job's your job. I love it. I'll tell you what, Scotty, so uh, you grew up in the south end of Louisville, man, right? You're a, you're Central a little Avenue. boy all the way. Andy Crowdis is here. Grew up with Randy Crowdis is here. I grew up on Central Avenue. A lot of people had a swing set in their backyard. I had Churchill Downs. There you go. <laughs> well, I, I, my family used to live out there, too, and it, it's, it's a bit gritty out there. How do you think that's shaped your, uh, your philosophy about I would coaching? Not trade, I would not trade the way I grew up. I lost my dad on Halloween Day. When I was nine years old at 115, my mother was a superstar, a, a, a one-room schoolhouse education in Greene County, Kentucky. Yep. She, with that one-room schoolhouse education, ran her own business for 43 years. That's incredible. The void in my life was filled by teachers, coaches, principals, system principals, counselors. And right before my mother passed away, 15 years ago, she said, you know, Scotty, if you really work hard, you might get a real job and make something out of yourself. <laughs> but I've never had a job. And she taught me a job was a, is a vocation. Yes. By definition, that's a vocation. And I had an ad vocation, and I was an advocate of young people because those same people were an advocate for me. Absolutely. That's beautiful. So let me ask you, what, what drew you to basketball? Was there some there was there one one thing that drew it, you? This is very this has not been told. Right oh, before right. my dad passed away, he built the best basketball goal in the backyard anywhere in our neighborhood, and everybody played in my backyard, and that was it. It was just yeah. like that that's sense of community started. of everybody coming back and that's where everybody we're... played in my backyard. Half dirt, half concrete. <laughs> it was the best goal in, in the neighborhood. <laughs> it was the best. Now, why did he build a basketball goal for me right before he passed away? I don't know. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I don't know. Hey, listeners. So we had a bit of an equipment malfunction here. So Scotty's going to go off mic for about three and a half minutes, and we'll be back to our normal microphone levels. All right. Here we go. <laughs> no mic. Listen. There you go. So I just want to pick up on fours. I get a call. Think about it. We won a national championship and graduated here in 2011. Right, right at the time of the Berman explosion, so to speak. He immediately gets jobs, maker's mark. He goes on and on and on and on. Very, very incredibly industrious. I get a call a year and a half ago, September of 22. He says, coach, you know, I owe you my life. I said, Forrest, no. He goes, yes, coach. Krista, my daughters, I owe you everything. I said, Forrest, don't do that. He goes, Coach, I'm going to pay back. I'm going to just, I'm going to distill a barrel through Green River. Okay, okay, Forrest, show me. Don't tell me. <laughs> I get a call this past fall. He says, Coach, I'm making it happen. He said, We're going to produce 180 bottles of Bellarmine basketball bourbon. He took just that simple event, that gesture, and he's turned it into this. He says, I'll ask for a $100 donation of the 180 bottles if you'll sign them, and I'll hand you the money for the operating expenses for the players. That for Smallwood, I mean, we used to have morning madness. Because we were nobody's gonna watch us at midnight, so we would do the, the morning news stations from five to seven a.m. And we give each one of them a corner of the court. I walk in the locker room three thirty in the morning. Get ready for morning madness. I turn the light on the locker room, and right below me on a couch, sleeping under towels, for Smallwood. <laughs> and he startles me. He goes, "Coat." I mean, I'm, and I'm like. What are you doing? I was so scared I was going to be late 
for the early morning practice. I slept here all night. <laughs> and he was the first one there. That effort, he won a national championship here. And to see someone come, Justin Benedetti here standing next to him. JB, what'd you text back me today? And what, what'd you say you would do if you could just do it one more time? The way we started practice every day. All these answers that are, all these questions that are in society, the reason we're gonna be okay, it's those guys in that locker room right now, getting ready to play. And it's these kind of young people. That's why we're gonna be okay. We're gonna be okay because of them. Trust me. You know, Russ's two little ones, Ren and Jake, I'm not the answer. They're getting whatever they want from me. Those players in that locker room are the answer. Just like JV and Forrest, Braden, Jeremy, Chris Dow, Keaston, go on and on and on. Luke Sprick. This is why we're here. Enjoy the night. Enjoy the night. That's right. All right. Hey, All right, we're, we're back good. up and running. Look at that. Let's give a big old there round of coach. applause for Scotty Davenport. Look, he got it done. Hey, he doesn't need it. If we have technical difficulties, he just is the <laughs> loudest person in the room. So before That's we fantastic. get into anything else, let's talk a little bit about what we're drinking up here tonight. So one of the uh, couple things is we have lined up for us. We have uh, when we actually pulled in, we didn't wasn't sure what we were going to taste up here, uh, but Forrest just kept bringing us bottles. So what we have up here is our first thing is we have Blueprint. Brian, why don't you grab his Blueprint yeah, bottle real let's fast? Do that. Who, where do we have blueprint back here on, uh, on, on our, out of our vendors? Blueprint? Look at this one. Blueprint right back there. There we go. Old Stillhouse Distillery right back there in the back. Brian, uh, let's look a little bit about the label. What's our proof? What do we got on this? This is always my favorite part, trying to find where the proof is. This is 100. All right. It's 100 proof from Old, Still Distil Old oh, Stillhouse right. Distillery. Has anybody had a chance to try this one yet? Yeah, what do you guys think? Good? I'm taking your word for it because I haven't had it yet. So we're going to have it up here tonight. Oh, yeah. That's got flavor. Oh, man. That's delicious. I like that. I don't know if that has a uh, – so I am actually new to the blueprint, but it, that is really, really good, guys. That is fantastic. Now, to also actually, as we go into what we have to taste today, we have Hemingway's, and I think this is their 102 proof. That's right, 102, 107, Brian? 102, we'll go with 102 that. 102 proof. So this is going to be a <laughs> really, really beautiful bottle, Hemingway whiskey. I'll tell you, this like, look right at here. that. Have you guys had Hemingway whiskey before? There you go. Yeah, I, 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 mean, I, I would know, like I to think you had has. it before, right? Like once, like a couple fours, okay, three yeah, times. There you go. There three you times. Go. So we're going to get to talk to him, and I don't want to, uh, like, spoil too much because, you know, I'll probably say everything Jacob would say. It's probably exactly what we'll do, but <laughs> that's a uh, really, that's really amazing right. pour. And we want to thank Hemingway Whiskey for helping put all this together. <laughs> then our next one that we're uh, drinking up here today throughout the whole entire night, we have Copper and Kings. Now, Copper and Kings, this is a Kentucky bourbon. This is fantastic. So look at that. There we go. This is finished in apple brandy barrels. It has got this beautiful, sweet nose to it. Really well rounded, hundred proof. Um, Talking about really forest, delicious. he put these, uh, these he put these fancy little things yeah, up is, here. They're falling all over forest the place. Ideas, on us. So on, we talk forest. these over. It's all forest fault. The hype uh, man. Just remember that the hype man. <laughs> then next we have Green River. Now we are not drinking the one, the single barrel pick. But I assume if Forest over there is listening, maybe Forest can get us a uh, Forest. For us. Maybe you can get us a bottle of what we're showing off tonight. You are the man of the can you hour, get us a bottle of that? Uh, Come on. So we're going to come up and show off that bottle. If Actually, if you didn't get to pick one of those up, now that you're in here, you can actually step over to that table and you can purchase one for $75. Beautiful bottle with this great uh, actually logo on the back here. And then we also have my friends over here at uh, Pursuit Spirits. This is actually going to be uh, their 108 proof. So really excited to try yeah, that I'm throughout the to day, too. Yeah, I'm excited to check that one out, for Forrest. sure. Oh, here he is. Forrest, I, we're going to bring you on a little bit later, so I don't want you to say <laughs> too, too much. But can you tell me a little bit about this bottle at all, come just on, real quick? Come on over here and sit down in, a, yeah. in, in the chair over here by Chris. We got a couple minutes. Tell us about this bottle, man. Yeah, so... First off... 
This is Forrest. Like, we've been talking about him, and we're going to pick fun of him this all night long. This is who Scotty was uh, this yelling is, about. This is so. who, who Scotty was yelling about when he had technical difficulties. So, Forrest, tell us a little bit about this special Green River bottle. Yeah, so we launched Green River uh, about a year ago, two years ago. Eight generation master distiller Jacob Call. When we revived that brand, the 10th Otis Distillery in the state, we were able to purchase a bottle that went back to the Western Kentucky Tornado Relief Fund. And so... The proceeds of that barrel went back to Western Kentucky for the Tornado Relief, and this is a hand-picked bottle by me and Scott Davenport. On the side, a good friend of mine, world-renowned artist Aaron Kaiser, has painted a mural of Coach. That is a beautiful mural. And uh, we're going to talk to Aaron in just a few minutes, and I'll tell you, uh, if you guys haven't had a chance to look at some of his artwork, this is a perfect place to view it right here on this bottle, oh, yeah. as well as on the back. Maybe, Forrest, can you stand up? Maybe we'll turn around a little bit. It's a bigger look picture. At this. Take a look at that beautiful mural there on the back go. of Forrest's sweatshirt right here. That is what you get when you get to purchase one of these amazing bottles as well. They are signed by Scotty Davenport, too, right? Every signed by Coach there. Davenport and Aaron Kaiser. Aaron Kaiser, again, uh, in the Bellagio, world-renowned artist. Again, the bottles are $100 for the day, and the supplies while last. We had 180 bottles. So, Forrest, the biggest question is you didn't pull one of these up here for me to try. Are you going to get angry if I open this one? This one's yours. Oh, look oh. at this. There we go. Well, I think we need Boom. two bottles up here then, yeah. Forrest. Come on. because <laughs> no, hey. we'll drink all of this. I think you'll like this one. It's a little more honey. <laughs> hey, Brian, why don't like you the... grab us two uh, glasses back there? Out of the four there. barrels that they gave us, this was one that really stuck out between me and Coach. Uh, yeah. I, this one might be a honey barrel, man. I, it's pretty pretty close. Now, Byron, my, my man Byron back there with Green River. It's my man back there. Byron, oh, have you had this yeah. one yet? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I like that. All right, Byron, a veteran in the, in the now, whiskey industry. Are you, uh, <laughs> four roses. are you pouring any of this out there at all? No. Oh, so you no one. Buy it. So the only way you get to try this is to buy it yourself. So, so it's a mash build of 70, 21, 9, 70 percent corn, 21 percent rye, 9 percent malted barley. All right. So let's cheers to everybody out there on this great whiteout game tonight. Thank you for coming. So big out cheers, here. everybody. Cheers, cheers, nation. Cheers. There we go. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. It's a heavy pour. Up here, uh, well, it's not a forest pour. <laughs> a forest pour, you just stick your like pinky into it and like wet your gums or something. It's a quarter ounce. Oh, that's good. Oh yeah. There you go. Wow. I've, I've, Guys, go buy one of those bottles. Fantastic. This is a one time. If you haven't picked one up, $75 right over at that table, right? Absolutely. Come so see please us. make sure that you get that. Now, Forrest, we're going to say bye to you for a couple minutes. Thank you. Because we want to Forrest bring up. Forrest is so used to us saying bye to him. Yeah, for a we actually while. like to say bye to Forrest a lot. <laughs> I'm glad there's not a couch today. We really try to kick Forrest off as much as possible. That's right. <laughs> but we are going to bring up next if he is uh, ready to go over here. So. The guy who actually painted this beautiful mural on top and put this sticker on this bottle, let's give a big round of there applause to Owensboro native, Aaron Kaiser. All Please, right. big round of applause. Welcome to the show, Aaron. Come on up, take a seat. Aaron, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah, so you're. Uh, so we didn't actually have this actually uh, scripted, but you're injured. I am. Were I am. you injured yesterday? Last night. Last night? Yeah. What did you do? <laughs> so, uh, painting a mural on a wall about 20 foot tall. Needed to get an extra foot or two. Stood on a five-gallon bucket and came off the five-gallon bucket. That'll happen, yeah. Oh. I and stand on five-gallon buckets a lot. Yeah, I yeah. injure myself <laughs> quite often, too. There you go. You know, it's funny that you said five-gallon bucket because, you know, when Forrest called and told me that you injured yourself, he uh, went OSHA certified and said that you fell off a ladder. Oh, oh, well, it sounds better. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sounds a lot safer. <laughs> sounds a lot better if you fall off a ladder, but I like falling off a bucket. Yeah. That's, that, that's it's really, been a really bit good. of a risk taker. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started. So you're a painter, right? Correct. And how long have you been painting for? I began painting uh, ooh, about 15 years ago. Okay. Wow, yeah. 15 years ago. Yeah. And from Owensboro? Yeah. What got you started in painting? So, uh, really funny, my dad was diagnosed with lung cancer. And he didn't have money for the treatment, so uh, I Googled how to make money fast. And one of the things that came up was being a painter, and that's what got me started. So, like, wow. actually just, like, painting 
like pictures or did what like yeah painting portraits and being, you had no idea what artist. you were doing no <laughs> i think i was 24 25 really and you're like wow. oh this will make me a quick couple yeah. bucks I'll oh, yeah i figured portraits. i could do it <laughs> you know, hey man, put it on your back and go, right? Yeah. Never yeah. thought right. that, like, oh, I'll just go paint some portraits. <laughs> if right. I went to go paint some portraits, it would look <laughs> awful. And uh, let me tell you, uh, we're getting a little feedback there. Um, if you guys have not seen any of Aaron's works, uh, my gosh, like the, some of the portraits you've done, uh, John F. Kennedy, uh, unbelievable. Steve Jobs, I've seen, uh, absolutely just fantastic. Um, oh. Is that me? Maybe. There you go. There we go. You just got to know where the where it's coming from. Yeah, so a majority of my work is painted in between five and ten minutes. Yeah, five or ten minutes. Yeah. Um, that's that's like... Uh, the Davenport painting was probably a ten-minute painting. So to, to paint something like that in ten minutes, how long does it take you to prep and practice? Like, do you just walk up and you're like, yeah, this is... Do you know what you're going to do? Um, or is there a lot of prep and work that goes into it? So not for each painting, but when I, when I started painting, I would do somewhere between 50 and 100 paintings every day just to learn how to paint. Did you ever have a uh, favorite one that you liked the most? Uh, no, not really. I like them all about really? the same. <laughs> but I try not to get attached to any of them. Sure, sure. They're all for sale. Now, you've worked for some major companies. Like, uh, you've done some big things for some places. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I mean, yeah, there's a yeah. list of amazing things that you've done. Yeah, I've worked with, uh, well, as far as the bourbon industry, I think I got, I think my first job was with Maker's Mark, creating okay. the Margie bottles. Yep. Yes. And then. Um, so how did, you, how did you get a job like that? Did you just, like, did you submit some stuff, like some works of art or somebody that you knew? No, I found that as long as I kept working and putting myself out there, those things came to me. Absolutely. Yeah. But, but they came from the work, not just sitting back waiting for it to happen, just putting myself out in front of people. So the live painting, that was just a catalyst for the artwork, just yeah. to get myself out in the public. Yeah. So you've done Makers, so Distillery Rise, you've done something at Makers Mart. Yes. You uh, did something recently at Green River, right? Well... When Green River was coming back, I got hired. I own a construction company as well. And our construction company got hired to redo the distillery, which left me in the position to redesign the, help redesign the brand. Yeah. Which put me in with the logo, the whiskey without regrets, the bottle design, all that. Wow. Well, yes. I know. So I was, I was sitting there a couple nights ago. Chris sends me a link to a, a KET documentary that was on you. And oh, I, yeah, was, that's I was amazingly impressed because you start painting, you're taking this black canvas and just putting light over top of it. And it was, it was incredible to watch yeah, those pieces come together. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So I approached that from a standpoint of like a metaphor of life is really the, the, the way that I paint, is the darkness is always there. Yeah, And you right. got to work to bring out the light. So the negative space is what I work with. Absolutely. Uh, but So what excites you? What, what gets you excited about a portrait? Like, is it just somebody comes up and says, hey, paint this for me? Is there, is there anything that's, like, really getting to excite you to get working? Yeah, when you're looking well, at a canvas, what is, it, in, what is it internally that, that's going around in, in your head there? So for me, it's an outlet. So I just enjoy going at it yeah. and not really having a plan. Right. Um, it's kind of like sculpting. Something sure. doesn't look like anything at first, and you keep messing with it till it turns in to look like something. Right. That's how I paint all my faces. Okay. So when you look at those faces, are you going through and you're, uh, do, do you find a right picture that you want to use first? When yeah. You know? Typically, I use a reference, uh, a reference photo of someone. I'm not. I'm not great at sitting around just creating yeah. faces out of thin yeah. air. But well, your use of like the the shadows the and shadows the brushes, are incredible. Like, like looking at those like deep dark shadows, like around eyes and something like it's. I don't know. You bring something out in these portraits that you do. It's it's yeah, and I beautiful. Think, I, oh, thank you. But I think it's really more based on the color theory of which colors I put next to which colors, like using blues for shadows and reds for shadows versus what you typically think and do you think of that beforehand or is that like you just you kind of set out your your palette and you just kind of go at it 
Yeah, just kind of go at it because I use all uh, latex wall paint. Yeah. So whatever paint I have laying around is what I use. Right. And, and I mix paint as I go for the colors I need. And you've had no formal training? No, no. Wow. Like I said, I didn't start till I was 24, 25. <laughs> That's 24, badass, 25, and like, and look uh, at that! Look at what we get! <laughs> look at yeah. that! Like that's, that's beautiful, beautiful. And oh. you said that that really didn't take long for you to come up with. No, that was probably about a 10-minute painting, from from concept to completion wow. of it. All right, nice. Uh, now some of my larger ones they take a little longer. Murals take me longer. Uh, things that have to be more precise on, but. And you really prep, you're prepping that out like yeah. way beforehand, like when you're doing like kind of like a, I think you did a pier not long ago, like yeah. a Kentucky Legend pier. Yeah. That was really pu beautiful. Yes, yes. That one took a little bit. Yeah, uh, that, that, that <laughs> looks <that's> really <laughs> crazy. You've done some work for NASA in the past. Yeah, NASA, Nike, used to work for University of Kentucky. Uh, yes. During the championship year, oh, it was a good, okay. yeah, it was a good yeah. year. I'm a Kentucky fan, so yeah, yeah. I would <laughs> come do the Catsby's Catsby Awards. I would paint there. So, do you, is there one? I know you said you don't have a, a favorite. Is there one that you did that uh, maybe even like I don't know surprised yourself? Like maybe you got done. And you're like, oh wow, I'm right. really good. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, <laughs> no, I, I like a ball eagle. Never. No, no I. I <laughs> I dislike a painting as soon as I'm done with it. Do you really? Yeah, I don't stand back wow, and, okay. yeah, I, and I, admire it or care about it too terribly much. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. that makes me ask my next quick quick question. Do you have anything hanging in your house of yours? Oh no. I, no? I, I, <laughs> really? I don't know. I don't have artwork in my house at all. I wow, can't, look at this no. guy. <laughs> it's, it's, I have it, but it's in my closets because I don't know where to hang it. I don't want to settle you, for all right. A certain look. Yeah. Well, I assume, and then you're like, you probably are like, oh, I don't want to keep walking by that every day. Uh, it's like something different. Yeah. Well, a big portion of my life is construction and home design. Sure. So that's where I run into the aesthetics part of not wanting to tie my house into something. All right. Cool. I'll always have a crew at my house testing a new product before we do, use it on somebody else's house. That's, right the good, that's the good part, too, yeah, especially yeah. if it's cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, usually it is. Sometimes it's not. So if you put yourself uh, in the shoes of your audience, like, give me some ideas behind what are you trying to evoke in your audience? Like, what are you hoping that they take from your art? You, more than anything, is just so, is that if you want to do this, you can do this. Yeah but it's a lot of work. Right. You know, man, I'm not the best painter in the world. I know that, but... Well, we're not the best podcasters in the world either, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Came on the right show. Yeah. You guys ever heard of Joe Rogan? I don't know. But the ability to keep going out there and every day doing it, yeah. even when you failed at it, right. is, is kind of what I want people to take away from my life in general, uh, not just the artwork. You know, I actually saw, I think it was either in that KET interview or something else that you did that you, uh, you said that, you know, it's, you're not overthinking anything that you're really doing. Like, um, you're kind of just going up and creating. Does that sound about right? Yeah. Like the way yeah. that you do it? Yeah, that's the way I approach almost everything. Wow. Everything's a wing. I'll tell you, if you guys <laughs> haven't seen, like, he has, he has some, he doesn't do any videos anymore, but there are videos on the internet if you go back and look. He doesn't of, do any more videos yeah, like right no, now. No. I, <laughs> wow. Got in trouble for those. Yeah, no. I mean, I, I, of no. being awesome, is that why you got in trouble? <laughs> yeah, no. I, but no, yeah, you I, can find some of those amazing ones online of just uh, showing off great stuff. I'll tell you what happened, the why I actually quit doing videos. Yeah, I would, we would love to hear that. Please do, yeah. I, um, uh, I painted Steve Jobs. Yes, I've seen this. Yeah, so that was on, and it was my first YouTube video I ever posted. Well, Steve Jobs passed away the day after. No way. Yeah, so it got like well, millions of views. Wow. Like my first YouTube video ever got like five or six million views in a day or two. <laughs> How and crazy is you're that? You're thinking like <laughs> this, your incredible sensation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> First then, video up, millions. Yeah, well, then, <laughs> then I noticed um, I wasn't prepared for what came back from that. Right. Because I had no infrastructure to a company, a business, uh, 
I hadn't done anything really at that point. You were just painting a picture. Yeah. You didn't know what was going to happen after. So then I was flooded with emails, and then I saw, you know, hate comments on there. Ninety-nine percent of it's great, but the one percent weighs a lot more when you see it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I wasn't prepared for that either, so I was like, I'm done with the social media. <laughs> I, I, I don't. That's, there's some people out there. Yeah, I don't. I just don't care much for the social media aspect of it. I'm with uh, you. That's a, I think the hardest part of any job today is like keeping up with that social media. Aspect. Well, now it's like you almost have to do something. Yeah, absolutely. Or you're irrelevant. Even right. if you are the best at what you do, if you're not viewed as the best by somebody on social media, then you become irrelevant. Yeah, right. Know? So, yeah, hundred percent. Right. So I post something like once or twice a month now. Just that. And that's it. Yeah. Well, I mean, when we were researching you, you did make it difficult. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you that much. Yeah. So, I, I do want to ask you, just um, looking ahead, just what what excites you about your artistic journey coming coming up? Is there any big projects or anything that you're you're looking forward to that are on the horizon? Yeah, I have several actually. Um, most of them down in Florida right now, which is a great place to be uh, with this weather, but can't really say my clients sure but, yeah but they're a massive project awesome uh, good yeah, they're they're really cool and just personally i mean um with your own journey are you looking into any kind of um any kind of new way to to do your art or, or are you just you, you like where you are and you're gonna stay there no 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 I, i'm i'm changing some things up right now to give it a new look and a you are okay yeah, yeah cool because i figure the way i see it i got four more years and then i'm done Okay. So. Yeah. Four more years, and then what? What's next? Just uh, focus on construction. Just see what happens. No, no, I'm dying, dying. Done, I'm, done, done, done. Oh, so that's fantastic. So I don't, I don't know what's after that, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> that's, that's all that's needed, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> fantastic. Well, all right. Well, listen, we didn't get to do this with Scotty because he had to run, and yes. we had. I don't, I don't even know where he went. That guy was so quick getting out of here. <laughs> that's <laughs> but right. We, we do always like to do something a little bit fun with our guests, and uh, we do have something today. Chris, tell us, uh, tell so us a little bit about what we got. So we do have something today, and now you do have a little bit of a broken wrist, so you're going to be a little bit handicapped because okay. you have your left hand. Yeah, yeah. So we, we actually brought this, like, amazing Papa shot. Yeah, look at here. this over here. And what we're doing is we're going to give 30 seconds on the clock to all of our guests to get as many as you can so in 30 Forrest seconds. So Forrest doing this too? Forrest That's right, he is. Too. Yeah, <laughs> Forrest is going to do it too. So your goal is, is to beat Forrest. And here's the thing. If you don't beat Forrest, I'm sure that someone's going to jack Forrest up to make sure that <laughs> oh, Forrest yeah. doesn't win. Well, no, I need to make sure that I beat Forrest. We'll make, what, with, yeah. with we'll a make broken sure wrist. That, we'll make sure that you beat Forrest. Yeah, with a broken wrist. <laughs> so if you want to step over here with Tell Brian let's for get just to the a court. second. That's right. All right, right let's head on over here. And Chris, Chris is going to be our timer. So what we're going to do here, we're going to put 30 seconds on the clock. We're going to have our guests compete against each other tonight, see who can score the most baskets in 30 seconds. So Chris, you tell us when we're ready to All go. Right. Aaron, you tell me when you're ready, and I'm going to start the clock. All right, we ready? Everybody cheer him along here because this is important. Yeah, we got to cheer Aaron on right here. He's, He's got to win. beat Forrest. That's his goal. Ready? Ready, Aaron? One, two, three, go. There's one. There's two. Three. He's on fire. Four. Oh, oh man. Four. Six. Did, oh, I was going to say, this did guy. we make this too easy? Oh, we're bricking it now. There's seven. We're at 20 seconds. Seven, 20 seven, seconds eight. Left. Come on, cheer him along. Come on, Nine. cheer him on. Here we go. This is wins a whole entire ten. gift basket for him. Here <laughs> we go. On. Come on. All right. How much time we got left? We got There's eight 11. seconds. Eight seconds left. Five, got 11 points. Four. 12. Three. 13. Two. And one. Whoa, That's it. 13 what do we got, points Brian? for Aaron Kaiser. I'll tell you what, everybody. Give him a, give him a round of applause. That was an amazing yeah, performance right there. <laughs> you got 32, 32. Is, is what he's telling 32. you. 32. 32. All right. Aaron, thank you so much for coming up. <laughs> Man, um, that was fantastic. We're going to bring up an, another Owensboro native, a student of Davis County High School. Scarlett's journey in the world of music began at a young age, guided by a profound love of singing and dedication that shows her true passion. 
That's so right. let's welcome up to the microphone now, Miss Scarlett Cole. Just make yourself comfortable there we go. over there. Scarlett, what Hi. a welcome beautiful to the show. voice. Welcome to Thank our show. Thank you so much. Like, wow. So Thank you. You're 16 now, is that right? I'm 16, 16, yes. and you started 13, 14 years old? I think 14, 14 was when I started old. playing out, yeah. Nice. And you didn't pick up You didn't pick up a guitar before then, right? Mm-mm. Wow, so no. in two years, Brian. Yeah. Two years. Yeah, that's right. Years. Like, that's <laughs> unreal. Um, incredible. So uh, this sounds uh, about a time during COVID. Yeah, around COVID. So you're probably stuck in the house, and you're saying, yeah. oh, you know what? Let's grab a guitar. Yeah, well, I've been singing forever, but then I got bored and I kind of wanted to start playing out, but you can't really play out if you don't play an instrument. So right. I just kind of picked guitar, I guess. Yeah. So has is it, is it always been kind of Americana and country yeah. folk music that you've been into? And, yeah, I kind of yeah. grew up listening to it. So Absolutely. Yeah. So you have like uh, your influence being like Noah Kahn, right? Yes, I love Noah Kahn, Tyler oh, Childers, I noticed. Megan Maroney, Chris Stapleton. Yeah. All of them, yeah. And uh, for anybody who doesn't know, you actually have performed for somebody. Uh, you opened for somebody pretty big, right? Yeah, I opened for Deanna Carter not too long ago, actually. That's impressive. Deanna Carter. Yeah. Brian, did you ever open for Deanna Carter? I did not open for <laughs> Deanna Carter. <laughs> Brian also plays the guitar for a lot longer, <laughs> and he hasn't no, opened for I've, Deanna I've Carter. I've opened for some punk bands in my time, but uh, never <laughs> yeah. Deanna Carter. So two years, you opened for a massive country star. Yeah. <laughs> 30 years, still hasn't that's done right. it. So that's right. You're getting there, Brian. Yeah, you you're know what there. happens. But we're opening for her. Look at it this that's way, right? right. That's right. I mean, we're that's on impressive our, we're on our way up, Scarlett, <laughs> all because of you. Oh, my gosh. So who would you say is your favorite person to uh, perform? Like, what's your favorite, out of everybody's music out there, the country and the folk stars, what's your favorite one to sing live? Um, maybe Tyler Childers songs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or Noah Kahn. I don't know. Yeah, There's so no. many. Have there you ever you seen go. them live? I have not. No? Oh, it's time to do to. that, isn't now, it? You know, I've seen Chris Stapleton live. He's really he's, good live. He's oh, incredible yeah. live. He's I got really to see good him live. a couple of years ago, and he was really, really he good. Is, he is. You know, Tyler Childers is coming to Louisville oh, here in September. He? Sure is. So, Jacob. Parents. Huh? But, uh, he immediately, he looked someplace <laughs> yeah, else. What's that? And like, oh, yeah, come on. Of course, Chris. Tyler Childers. <laughs> she wants to see Tyler Childers. Are you going to make sure? Okay, well. We Never need to go mind. Together. We'll give your we'll give Forrest ticket to you. You're good. Okay. So you'll yeah. you'll go see Tyler Childers this year. So definitely so on me. You're gonna come out with me, and we'll we'll make sure that you see Tyler Childers. Jacob, you can mark that down. We're gonna she get it done. done. We're gonna get it done. Yeah, mark great. it down as long as Jacob brings whiskey. Okay. So tell me, Scarlett, okay. I, I've got a I've got a kid about your age. So does Chris, and uh, okay. my kid plays guitar. So you're still in high school. Yes, I'm a junior. That's fantastic. How do you balance your academics with, with, your, uh, with your entertainment here that well, you, you want to get out and play? Um, I actually take all my classes at the community college in town. Oh, okay. So I'm going to graduate high school with my associate's degree in science. Is that right? So, yeah. So, wow, that's oh, awesome. Yeah, that's a hey, big old applause for that. Scar, I don't have fantastic. an associate degree in science either. So, so. I, I get gotta, off. I've got to tell my kid to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I only take a couple classes a day, though, because I already have all my high school credits done. So I get off school at 12 every day, and then I don't have any classes on Fridays. So I have a lot of spare time to do stuff. So. Yeah, that's awesome. And like, you so know are, you, are, you, um, are you also writing songs as well as performing them? or uh, We're still going to get, get into that. I haven't spent as much time on that as I need to, but I've been working on it. Have you? Nice. Yeah. How's that feel? Intimidating, like doing it, or just like not yeah. sure if anybody will like it? Like I, I would assume that's probably just... It's kind of... The things that I write about are kind of personal things, yeah, I guess. Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm not sure if you want to air that out to the yeah. world. Or anything, <laughs> that I was understand. definitely one of the things I had to get get around when I started writing songs because yeah. it's so deeply personal. Like you don't mm. know if you really want people to hear that. Yeah. You know, especially being in high school, that would be a little bit. Uh, that'd be a little tricky. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what are you looking forward to as you're growing through your beginning journey, like into music and things like that? Is there anything that you're looking forward to coming uh, up? Anything like that? I do have some gigs coming up, but I don't know if I'm allowed to like announce them yet because <laughs> I have some. I have some pretty big things coming up. Oh, I, don't, yeah? I don't know if I'm allowed to share them yet. Okay. Well, if you can announce them, where can everybody find you? So when we do okay. announce where you're, you're going to do it, people can see it. So where can right. we find you? All of my social medias are at Scarlet Call Music. 
Nice. At Just Scarlet Hall name. Music. Yeah. You can also make sure if you can't find that and you want to find out wherever she's going to play all of these top secret stuff she's not telling us right now, you can also follow me at Kroger Chris Picks. Also, yep. the freaking podcast where we'll make sure that we actually put all of her social media all up there so we can make sure we follow uh, your whole entire career as you grow up in music. And I'll tell you, Scarlett, we wish you all of the best. Thank That's right. You. Like you, again, a, amazing voice. Thank you so Thank much you so for much. Uh, entertaining our Absolutely. crowd this whole entire time. I, I do you. have one more question. Okay. So, okay. looking ahead, dream collaborations. Ooh. Let's say any artist you get to collaborate with. What's going to make you the most excited? My mom says Jelly Roll. <laughs> <laughs> Who I was there? You Jelly go. Roll. Jo Jelly, Jelly Roll. roll. I love him right. so much. I saw him at a concert recently. He's so good. Yeah? Hey, we might be able to Maybe work him. that out. Who He's knows? So, good. So, so your mom is Jelly Roll. Are you Jelly Roll also, or would you... Maybe Noah Kahn. Noah Kahn? Oh, Maybe. So Noah Kahn and Jelly Roll, so it You're sounds like, like the perfect trio. <laughs> I want them two to collab so bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe they'll listen to this and they'll uh, they'll do it for you. I hope so. <laughs> there you go. Scarlett, thank you so much for joining us up here. And thank, thank you, you so for much having for me. Yeah. You, you ready to show off some basketball skills now? Yeah. So, oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. No, you got to so shoot, too. But here's Aaron the best thing. 13. Yeah, and the best thing that we can promise you, no matter what, you will beat Forrest. What did he get? Forrest hasn't, hasn't gone That's yet. That's how we know We're that find you'll out. beat Forrest. Why hasn't there's, he gone yet? <laughs> because there's no chance <laughs> that Forrest will win this. We guarantee it. That's right. Sorry, Forrest. It, it, it is rigged. <laughs> Completely rigged against you. All right. We're going to head over here to the court. Right. We're going to head right over here to the court, and we're going to have Scarlett go for 30 seconds right over can here. Can right? go first? What's that? Can Forrest go first? Can Forrest go? Sure, Forrest can go first. Absolutely. <laughs> Forrest, are you ready, buddy? All right. Look, he, he's ready to go. You got to wait for us over here there, Forrest. Come on now. All right, Chris is the clock man. Okay, Forrest, when I say go, you're going to start. Seconds, and buddy. remember, this is rigged against you. 30 right, seconds. ready? Go. There's one. There's two, three, four. Look at this. He's got, he's got a trick. Seconds. Five, four, six, seven. Is this how you shot when seven. you played? Eight. It wasn't. Granny style. Nine. Oh, ten, yeah. You were on the bench. Eleven. <laughs> well, on 12, the national championship 13, team. On the bench. Fourteen. He's taking well, the lead, people. No, has he, though? Has Fifteen. He? Sixteen. Has he? Seventeen. All right. Forrest. Five seconds. Eighteen. Four. Three. Nineteen. Two. And one. Done. Nineteen. Nineteen is what Forrest for has. Mr. Forrest Small. Nineteen. Big old nineteen for Give Forrest. Give a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, big old 19. round of applause. Half round of applause. All right, for Scarlett. Forrest. Way to go, half round. All right. You got to take Scarlett, Forrest out. Up. All right. Are you ready? All Scarlett. right. Forrest nineteen is our leader. Scarlett, I'm pretty sure you can get twenty. Scarlett's no going to take him out. He can get twenty. That's right. You All saw right. you saw his technique. Let's, right, let's make him pay for that. end up being worth two. Who knows? All right. Are you ready? We're ready. Two, three, go. One, two, get it, get it. Come on, Scarlett. Three. There we go. You're killing it. Four. All right, five. Yeah, fast. she's killing it. So Kill Forrest. Six. There we go. Come on. Seven. seven. Look at this. We got 15 seconds. Seven, seven, seven. Come on, give me an eight. There, there we go. There is eight. There we go. Ten Nine, seconds. Nine, ten, seven, ten, eleven, six, five, four, three, Two and one. Oh, and what do we get? All right, we got eleven. We on got that eleven, one. and right, here's what so was cool though. All the scarlets, all the scarlets were worth two. Oh, so Scarlet got twenty-two. 22 Way to go, Scarlet! Wow, You're Scarlett. ahead of Forrest. Good Tell you job, what, Scarlet. That's pretty incredible. That's pretty incredible right there. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, she's our leader if they all count as two. All right. All, all right, right. Let's get back situated so, here. So our next guest, and we're going to close it out with these great guys to have them come up here and drink some whiskey with us. First off, Master Distiller, Mr. Jacob Call. What's going on, Jacob? How are you? Doing good. He is back. He is back. And another half round of applause for Forrest. Way to go, Forrest. Jacob. Yes, it's been sir. a while, man. How you been? I've been now, great. I've been busy. I'll been tell you busy. what, we've seen you guys before. A lot's changed yeah, since it's, last it's episode. Been, it's been a while, but hey. Full distillery, second largest distillery in the state. Jacob's opened up. That's Kentucky owned. That's right. Yeah, we uh, we started distilling um, last July. I yeah. think we've made about 30,000 barrels already. 
Oh, look at you. You're busy. Yeah, we've been busy. Yeah, I know that we were talking, and you said, yep, it's coming up. We're going to start our first distillate here in a couple of, a couple of weeks, and yep. uh, it looks like you did that. We did it. Yep. Fantastic. And, and the hype man's back. The head of hype. It's head of hype and chancellor of morale. That's yes. right. That's right. Now, I'm, Jacob, I did want to ask you, um, how's, how's Clayton doing? Did he, get, did he finish that veterinarian uh, program? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's probably graduated by now, maybe. Oh, that's good. Yeah. He, he was really taking his time with that, I know. <laughs> In episode six, Clayton joined Jacob, and uh, so he was telling us about checking on the cows one night, and uh, so we were all ribbing him about uh, taking the veterinarian program, but he's been working on it for, I don't know, how long it had it been now? It's probably 20-something years. Yeah, it's yeah, over 20 years, uh, 20 I years think. years to Man. be a uh, veterinarian. This guy takes his time. We thought that we would go through a tasting with you because, okay, like, why sure. not? You know, getting ready for the game. We got about Let's 15 minutes left. And we have so many great partners who came out here. And I'll tell you, you you've worked with the hype man over here. I told Forrest, it's like, all right, just make sure that we have some whiskey <laughs> laid out and poured for us. So we thought we would just kind of taste through and just see what we got, what, what okay. all of our great partners who came out here. Yeah. Right. So our first one, which we've already kind of dived in a little bit, but you're actually going to start on this side, okay. too. I tried to make it easy. So the first one for you is going to be the um, Blue Prince right up there. All Blue right. Prince is going to be from that uh, Steelhouse Distillery, old yeah, Steelhouse I Distillery right guys. there. Yeah, a so, couple of one guy from Owensboro. So, you know, uh, Jacob, tell us a little bit about, for anybody out there that's a whiskey taster or anything like that, what is uh, the way that you approach tasting a uh, whiskey for the first time? Yeah, you know, I always like to uh, definitely nose it first. You want to kind of open your mouth up a little bit and just kind of take it all in, you know. Mm. For this, this is very sweet. You know, yes, I get a lot very, of sweetness. Very sweet. A lot of sweetness on the nose, um, vanilla, a lot of vanilla. I get right a little bit of nuttiness on the nose, too. Yeah. No, I did kind of finish that. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> you got an empty glass. You get an empty glass. Yeah, I have an empty it glass. I smell it reminds an empty me of glass. episode six already. <laughs> it's a beautiful bottle. What do you got? What do you got, Forrest? Have you had Blueprint before? Tell us about it, there, Forrest. Had a hype. It's good. It's um, really balanced. There's a yeah, little bit bad. of um, you know some tanginess right there on that mid palate. Some yeah, very well balanced, very yeah. very sweet, smooth, no burn at all. No, um, nothing. And I think we said this was 100 proof over there. So yeah, good finish. Or 100 proof. I like it. For 100 proof. I like it. Now, so, are these forest pours that we did here? They, they the look like Forest pours yeah, are like are a forest little... forest pours. <laughs> Quarter ounce pours. Right, no doubt. <laughs> so we don't let forest pour anything anymore. We learned our lesson <laughs> yeah. really, really quickly. Your bar is a little smaller here, though, than it's a at little, your other it's, studio. Yeah, I didn't have as much yeah. to pick from. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now, I, I do want to just kind of get into the whole idea behind why we're here today and, and this barrel and what makes that so special. And yeah. Can you tell us about that a little bit for us? Yeah, so about two years ago, Jacob and I kind of came together. We had the um, the pleasure of resurrecting the 10th Otis Distillery. Uh, in our launch party, we actually worked with Aaron Kaiser to, to give back to Western Kentucky Tornado Relief. As you know, a couple of years ago, Western Kentucky had a tragic storms come through net north, yes. uh, night after night. And so we raised $100,000 for that uh, cause, and this barrel is aged, come to, and, and uh, we've donated that back to the Bellarmine basketball team and, and thought the story was there. You know, Coach Davenport really brought this program back to life, just like Jacob kind of brought Green River back to, to the forefront of the whiskey industry. Very what a nice. great story. Now, just speaking of back to Jacob real quick, that is what our second pour is, just because I want to go into it. So we okay. actually there you go. We stuck this beautiful Hemingway up here. This is the 102 proof. I is saved right? this one. 102 proof. This is our everyday signature edition, number one rye whiskey in the world by Whiskey Advocate. It's good. Yeah, yeah you know, we're, we're super proud of that. You know, to come out with a, a new product like that and get recognized by somebody like Whiskey Advocate, you know, it's... It's all spirits. It's Scotch and Irish and Japanese, and you know, number thirteen overall and number one rye in the world is that's uh, doesn't happen very often. Yeah, and I'll tell you, just on the nose here, definitely a little bit deeper, like darker yeah. notes to it. Yeah, um, plum really and good. raisin and yeah. dark fruits. You know that the rum season or the rosso sherry finish yeah. has been something that when you know we met last time yeah. it was. 
it was kind of our first skew, but it's really kind of been our, our uh, kind of the callus of what we're coming out with in the future and tells the story of his, his father being a seventh generation master distiller at Papa's Pilar and what he's doing down in, in Key West. Absolutely. Oh, man. Christmas in a bottle. Yes, like Christmas that's, in a bottle. Yeah, I, Sir. I, I think if you can get sweet and spicy and smooth, Yeah, and I, I was getting ready to it. say the word dessert <laughs> whiskey, but it really doesn't because, like, you do get some sweetness, but, man... That like thick, dark notes of it. Yeah, that's a yeah. That's always a goal for me is is balanced with sweet and spicy. That's, I kind of even on my bourbons, I favor the higher rye to get some spice yeah. out of it. And we've talked before. You like you like the rye grains a little bit more. Uh, I do. More yeah. Than anything right? Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't do much with wheats now, right? No, not not right now. We we're we're making a lot of wheat and bourbon at yeah. the distillery, uh, but I don't have any brands out. That are weeded, but that's not really your grain of choice. You like the rye? I'm a, I'm always more of a rye pan. I like that little bit of yeah. Sweet. I like the sweet and the spicy combination. Oh, you know, yeah. wheat's wheat's uh it's a little light. You got to age it a long time, I think, for wheat to really come out. Yeah, there you go. But that's also how you're getting that. You know, with with that rye, and you're doing it in those, like those sherry casts and stuff like mm-hmm. that. That's how you're adding that little bit of sweetness. Yeah. It's also making it very palatable, very approachable. Yeah. Um, and doesn't like, you know, get you that good yeah. old burn, that, that Kentucky hug, we like to say. Yeah. I think it's adaptable too, right? The, I think the rye, it, the spiciness, especially in 95.5, you can do some barrel finishings to it, and that, it, that really brings the complexity of that rye out. Um, just super excited. One thing that's super cool about the distillery is we've got eight acres of experimental rye that we're, we're grown that's already harvested, or not harvested, it's already sprung. And, and so we'll have a, a really grain to glass uh, with Hemingway at the distillery. So we're excited about that. I know last time we talked, you were talking about probably this year you start in the tourism. Uh, how's that looking? You guys, you yeah, guys we're, cleaned we're up? Yeah, we're exploring it. We just... Uh, we just put a contract on some additional land uh, right beside of us, uh, so we're going to be looking into the visitor experience, and uh, there'd be some pretty cool things, uh, you know, maybe some some uh, some golf holes off the back deck. Oh, or, there you uh, go, trying yeah. to keep everybody some, there, like some the ATV Disneyland rides anyway. or something. Yeah, you got to make it like Disney World for adults now. Six toe cats. <laughs> six toe cats. I'm sorry, cats. did you say six toe cats? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Hemingway, he was famous for having over 50 six toe cats on his, gonna... in his house in Oh, yeah, West. that's right. That's yeah. right. So we're going to buy Jacob a six toe cat. Six toed cats and chickens in the trees. We yeah. will not if have chickens. Yeah, no, listen, we'll <laughs> actually, draw the forest. line at birds. Forest, actually, it's, it's really important. Uh, I actually brought you a gift today. Yeah, and I'll tell you, if anybody has not listened to one of our, if you want to go back and actually uh, listen no. to our episode with Forrest, Forrest has a, uh, <laughs> Forrest has a weird fear. He does. He Forrest, do you want to tell us this weird fear? <laughs> it, it's a specific bird that is in Key West that hangs out until about 3 or 4 in the morning, and nobody knew that roosters were in trees until you're walking the streets. I know Can't I didn't. sleep until 4 o'clock in the morning one jumps on you. Well, I'll tell you what, Forrest, I brought you your very own <laughs> chicken that you could put you. in a tree. Oh Look at that. God. Just for you, buddy. It's the best podcast. Just, just for you. It's, and it again, doesn't stop I know you're from scared, you. It is but really it's an okay, unreasonable buddy. fear. <laughs> Even um, when the mics yeah. are down, it does, you guys don't stop on me. It's ridiculous. <laughs> How scared he is of roosters. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's probably going to go to his house and just like, like pray to oh, him. Oh, I'm planning on it. I'm planning on it. Just the claws you on the door. Wait. That's it. That's all it is. <laughs> what else we got down here, Chris? All right. Let's go to our next pour because I want to try to get through all of our sponsors yeah. who actually want to put a sure. bottle up here. I'm so our next this one, one, this is going to be Copper and Kings. It should okay. be that pour for you there. Ooh. Copper and Kings. It's finished in April. Apple oh, wow. brandy barrels. Okay, great. Wow. So I good, I heard a lot of good apple things brandy about finish. Copper and Kings. Oh, oh, man, and those Kings. guys are doing incredible things I mean, uh, over there. Mm, and that's that's good apple right He's got a great nose. nose to it. Oh, my gosh. Just like sweet, fruity nose yeah. right on top. Man, if you guys haven't man, had a chance had to hold, try that over there. Wow. I'm telling Copper you that and Copper Kings. Kings. Oh. I love that. Man, and even good. the blueprint. Everything on this table is phenomenal. Like, It's good. That's really good. Very good. Very interesting. Very complex. Nice, sweet. A lot going I'm on. A, oh again, my I'm a big apple brandy fan. We've, we've mm. got some apple brandy finishes coming down the line. You know, we, we've talked to Copper and Kings many times before. This is a company, yep. you know, that's been making brandy in yep. bourbon country for 10 years. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, this is their very first it's bourbon like they a, ever put almost out. Almost like an apple crisp or something. Like yeah, a, really, yeah, really. Apple, apple crisp yeah. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. do you think of this, Forrest? 
I think of Apple Jacks all day long. It's a uh, Apple Jacks. All right, yeah, I, I get a, I get that spiciness to it, but Gosh, also with that just, apple. Oh, it's good. It's really good. Now, because we only have about five minutes left. Yeah, we put a, this oh, taste thing right at we the did. end, didn't we? Boom. <laughs> well, <laughs> originally there were two bottles, and then Forrest gave us five. So, story of our life when you work with Forrest. This guy over uh, here. It does not hype. <laughs> That's right. Head of hype. Best in the business. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, our next pour, what we have here, this might be something a little familiar to you. Oh, this is going to be, we're going to finish right here with this. Well, before this one that's off the, off the table right here, which then will be yours. Okay. This last one here is going to be uh, the Green River. So this is All just right. going to be our everyday regular Green River. It's okay. not our barrel slide. Yeah, I've had so a few of those. You've had yeah, like one or two of them, right? <laughs> this very is going to be a 90 proof Green River. 70, 21, 9. Look at that. Green Tenth River. oldest distillery state dates back to 1885. Head of hype knows it. <laughs> Got to memorize. <laughs> that's right. Like Eighth generation was, master distiller Jacob Call like created that product. Asked questions about yeah, it over and over and over again. <laughs> I think he's done this. <laughs> Let's have a little bit of this beautiful Green River. I mean, that's just super Solid. smooth. You know, that, and that's really what my goal back then was just to make a good, solid everyday bourbon. Yeah, it's, just, it's you know, really, really good. Thank you, guys. Nothing, it. nothing yeah. flashy, just good and solid. I remember sitting down with a, we had a meeting about the price point and I, that was what we all said was we wanted an every day that everybody could go and pick up. So $35 for one of the best whiskeys you can find. That's right. That's, that's the way to do that's it. That's a delicious pour. It's a delicious pour. I think I can still say thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> you definitely can. Yes, you can. <laughs> you definitely still, can. You still distilled what's there for the next five years. All right. To finish off our whiskey pours that we have up here, our friends from Pursuit Spirits, Pursuit United, yep. is this beautiful little bottle right here. Oh, yeah. This is going to be 108 Smells proof, amazing. bold flavors. If you know Kenny Coleman and Ryan Cecil. I do. I've guys. been on their show twice, I think. Oh, they're, they're <laughs> incredible guys right there. This oh, is wow. going to be their blend from their series right yeah, there. The so let's cheers incredible. back over there if anybody wants to try it. Pursuit Spirits right over there in the corner. Dude, I get Coca-Cola on the back end of that. Wow, it I'll tell you what. It's such a different nose than everything yeah, else different. we've had so far. Very different. It's a lot of caramel, a lot of very sweet oh, smelling. Yeah. But yeah, big time. You get that Coca-Cola? Yeah, like vanilla. Little absolutely. Vanilla absolutely. Coke. Vanilla Coke. I think. Vanilla Coke, brown that's sugar, it. Like vanilla a dark Coke. brown sugar. Yeah, dude, that Give is a little burnt dark brown sugar. Just a thank you to everybody that's came today. We've, we've got Shaw Ross, Goodwood came, Copper and Kings, Castle and Key, Nulu, Bourbon Pursuit, Papa's Pilar, Hemingway, Chicken Cock, Green River Bargetown Bourbon Company, my man Adam at Still House with there you Blueprint. Go. We've got Beam and Maker's Mark. Thank Castle you so much for Madison coming. Madison over there, who's Madison, awesome. Madison, they're awesome. <laughs> B Agency, they're great people. Everyone came out today. Thank you. It was a great cause. It was a great team. Thank you all. Yeah, yes. we kept asking for us for a full list, and, uh, you know, we just had to make it up once we got here. Yeah, it was. It just kept <laughs> growing. Forrest, I thought I was going to cry when the coach started crying, talking about how awesome you are. <laughs> well, you have stories like that. It's okay. We, like, pinched him. But we, I pinched him before he went up there to make it seem <laughs> like it was much more, like, right. really deep to heart. I, I, I want to say one thing, though. If you could remember me of one thing, what would it be? Is it fireworks? Oh, yeah. We had a hell of a fireworks show at the distillery. It was a little sketchy there at for the, a little bit. Yeah. It distillery. wasn't just fireworks. Off, we had for, full for on and fireworks. Yeah, we had fireworks. Really sounds yeah. sketchy. <laughs> if Forrest would have said we were having fireworks here tonight, I'd be like, I'm out. <laughs> Imagine 25,000 barrels and a big fire combustion. Yeah, that it was, was awesome. This is why Forrest well, doesn't make decisions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's the wild, this is wild why west gotta out there, buddy. This has got to run it through people. Yeah, got to have an assistant intern. Um, oh, Forrest, just goodness. to end it, I want to say thank you for reaching out to us and that letting us come yeah, out man, and uh, trying to, to do whatever we did. Um, sometimes Brian and I don't even know what it is. That's you right. Know, well, listen, I will say, you know, it's a $9 billion tax industry. You have a big say in, in, in this and, and, and a big, big character and, and why this is so uh, a wonderful industry to be in, to be a part of, to be in Kentucky. Uh, so thank you for what you do and what you all do and bring oh, yeah. everything to light. But, uh, man, just excited for where we are and what we're going to do, Chris, Can't uh, wait, in buddy. the future with whiskey. Let's so. do it. 
Jacob, no, I absolutely appreciate thank it. Thank you so much for coming out and again and being on our show and just kind of walking us through this awesome sample. That's uh, right. And your now incredible it's, daughter. Oh and now gosh. it's your time, Jacob. Might be yeah. the real talent. <laughs> yeah. She's the real oh. talent. Now That's exactly right. Now it's Jacob's time to see. <laughs> I think because right he now, unseat. <laughs> so you're beating your daughter. There you go. <laughs> What's the what's the night? Do you know the night spite song for us? You should have that memorized. Uh, no, I don't. Okay, but I, I will did tell you. You don't. <laughs> I tell, I Are don't. you a national champion if you don't know the night spite song? I could. I, I can know. sing the Kentucky fight song though. <laughs> well, look at you. <laughs> All right. How about we just do go nights? All right, go Jacob, nights. you're up. Let's All right, close here it we go. Let's walk over and get We're Jacob going over on the there. court. <laughs> Jacob, you're up, buddy. Let's see what kind of shot you got. Hmm. 1791. All right, again, and he's been drinking a little bit, but we got 30 seconds on the clock. That's right. Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> it's fine. 30 look at it this seconds. Way, Jacob, the only person that you're going to be beating is your daughter. Okay, because you've beat Forrest. All right. All right. Are, Are we ready, ready to go? Let's right. do it. One, two, three, go. There's one, two, three, up. Oh. Here we go. Four, Scarlett, five, are you gonna are you gonna six, with, are you gonna hold the title? Seven. Definitely. Come on, you can do Come it. On. Eight. Nine, ten. Oh, All look right, at that back have, to back. We got fifteen seconds. Fifteen 11, seconds, Jacob. Twelve. You're on pace. Come on. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Eight, seven. Fifteen. Five, 16, four, 17, oh, three, 18, two, 19, one. 20, 20, oh, 20. Oh, he, didn't, he didn't get it. He didn't get it. That oh, means that Scarlet so is close. our champion. Scarlet <laughs> is the champion. Scarlet is the champion. And you know what? Of the Scarlet, sip and switch. I don't think that your dad gave it to you. I think you really beat pod. him. He was trying to beat you. You really him. beat him. So we would like to go ahead and thank everybody for coming out to this <laughs> sip and switch today. That's right. Thank all of our sponsors today that have came out. Thank Forrest for putting this together. I want to thank Scarlett. Thank you for the beautiful music that you gave us today. That's Brian, right. close us out. Tell them where to go. You got it, buddy. Thanks to everyone for coming out tonight to celebrate this event with us. A special shout out to the sponsors, Kroger, Kaiser Arts, Green River Distillery, Hatfield Media, Hemingway Whiskey Company, and special thanks to all of our guests here with us. And thanks to the listeners for tuning in. Find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Firkin Podcast. Questions or comments can be sent to mailbag at firkinpodcast.com. Visit Patreon to become a founding member at patreon.com slash Podcast. Subscribe and rate us on your podcast platform. And make sure to share it with a friend. But until next time, Chris, let's raise a glass to the stories behind the drinks. Cheers. And go Knights. All right.